this is the time my mom faked her death so she didn't have to take care of me and my siblings. Yes, this girl really faked her death. So at the time, I was five and my little brother was three. It started off with my mom saying that she didn't feel well and she couldn't pick me up from school so the bus would have to take me home. Well, a few months after, she started getting picked up from our house by this black car. She said that car was picking her up because of her so-called doctor's appointments. And she wasn't able to drive herself because she was too sick. Well, one day when this car came to pick her up, she never came home. Me and my little brother were sitting around for a couple days waiting for her to come home, but she never came home. And we were young, so we didn't do anything. Eventually, my aunt came over to to our house and told my little brother and I that our mom had passed away and that she was cremated and they kept the ashes. So our aunt started taking care of One of my fans has a crazy mother story time. So me and my mom decided to go to Walmart to pick up a couple things. While I was there, I ran into a little girl who happened to be a fan of mine and she was with her mother and her mother was wearing this black shiny bracelet. Just keep that in mind. So they come up to me and they're super nice at first and her mom's like, hey, my daughter's a big fan of yours. Do you mind taking a picture with her? So of course I'm being really nice back and I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? The little girl comes over to me and she was really cute too, but she stands next to me so her mom can take a picture of her. November last year, I gave birth to our first baby. It's the first in my family and the sixth in my husband's family. It's important to say that all six kids are boys and my mother-in-law is in some sick, crazy girl phase. Ever since we made the announcement, my mother-in-law convinced herself that I was pregnant with a girl. I told her that once we knew the gender, she'd be the first person to know. Lo and behold, it was a boy. We told my mother-in-law we were having a boy, but she was still convinced it was a girl. She told the whole side of the family that it was a girl and I corrected her, but she told them I was just annoyed because I wanted a boy first. I wanted a healthy baby. I didn't give a damn about the sex. She told them that we are naming the girl after her mom, which we will never do because my hubby hates his grandma. When the baby shower gift started to come, I noticed a lot of things that wasn't in the register, like embroidered things with the grandma's name on it. Well, the baby was born and imagine the surprise. It was a boy, just like we have been telling everyone. The problem, for them at least, is that now the baby has plenty of girl clothes that we plan on putting on our son, specifically for his family video calls and for pictures with them. After Saturday, my mother-in-law gave us a call and started screaming because I got married four years ago and my husband and his family are many times over millionaires. My family is just middle class. Our wedding costs around 700k paid by him and his parents. My parents gave me a flat fee of 10k for a dress which they are also giving to my sister too. My sister and her fiance are lower class. She has 170k in student loan while he has 110. They have 18k in medical debt and 35k in credit card debt. Well last night was my sister's birthday dinner and she announced she was engaged and wanted help paying for her wedding. She gave me a spreadsheet of how much she was going to need for her dream wedding. Anyways, her dream wedding is supposed to cost 100k and as her only sister, I need to step up and help pay for her wedding since her parents are only giving her 10k for a dress. She said she needs me to give her at least 70k since I'm rich now. When I told her I'm not giving her 70k, she cried and said it wasn't fair how I get whatever I want. When she realized I wasn't going to budge, she broke down about how I'm just using motherhood to be greedy and lazy. I have two year old twins. I eventually told her I wasn't going to be bullied into giving her 70k. She's 15 weeks pregnant, hence why she's in a rush to be married right away. When I tried to leave, she just snapped and said, Story time about how I got arrested for stalking my celebrity crush. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. When I was 15, I saw my celebrity crush for the first time in a movie. After that, I pretty much went to all of his movie premieres and events. I was able to take a picture with him and even got a signature. To say that I was obsessed was an understatement. Now, here's where the problem began. He started dating this woman, aka another celebrity, and I pretty much lost it after that. At the time, I was living with my mother and she couldn't help but notice the change in me. I started staying out pretty late, mostly because um, I was out in the city looking for him. I knew all of his hangout spots because the paparazzi always caught him there. So I basically would hang out everywhere he would. I followed him to his house, I followed him to the gym, and I followed him to the grocery store pretty much everywhere. I decided to sign up to his gym, and I started talking to him, and he started talking to me, and he asked me out on a date. Part 2 is up. Do you style your hair the same way every day? Well, there's an urban legend about a woman who always wore her hair in a bun, but for her, this habit would lead to something terrifying. This woman loved wearing her hair in a bun, but she might have taken it a bit too far. She didn't want to style her hair differently or even take out her bun to clean her hair. Whenever she took a shower, she would just wear a shower cap to make sure the water didn't mess up her bun. At night, she would sleep with a towel around her hair so the bun didn't move. After a while, she had to put hairspray in it to mask the smell. Then her scalp started feeling itchy, so she would put more hairspray in it. Even when the itching got 
intense, she just applied more hairspray. But her husband finally found out about how bad the situation had gotten when he woke up one day and his wife was still asleep. He tried to wake her up, but she wouldn't move. She had died in the middle of the night. The husband called the police, fearing that something unusual might have happened. But when her body was examined, they finally took out her bun. Inside her hair, they found something terrifying. They found a huge spider had gotten into her hair, made a nest, and laid eggs. When the baby spiders hatched, they bit through her skull and ate her brain. Story time. A girl named Akira Kendrick sent me the story and the background of it is that her dad was very abusive to her mother and her mother got custody of Akira and her dad was not happy about that. Anyway, so Akira was with her aunt and her cousins at her grandmother's house, all on her mother's side, and her dad stops by to say hello. And Akira's outside playing with her cousin, and her dad comes up to her and grabs her arm and says, do you want to go to Walmart with me? And at the time, she's only seven, so all she hears is toy aisle, so she says, yes, let's go. So they get in the car, they head to Walmart, she gets some really nice pom-poms, and then he says, okay, let's go back to your grandmother's house. So he starts driving and he gets on the highway, and Akira knows that her grandmother's house is right around the corner from Walmart, so he does not need to get on the highway. So she says, dad, where are we going? And he gets really mad and says, shut up sit down it does not matter so akira's in the back seat she's really scared and she just shuts her mouth so after being in the car for a while they eventually arrived at this really old abandoned beat up house and when they walk in akira sees about 25 people and she does not know any of them her dad brings her to a room puts her in a little closet throws her some toys and her pom-poms and says play part two is coming right now Story of the time a police officer pulled me over just to flirt with me. So when I first got my license, I would always go to Wawa in the middle of the night. Usually I would pick up my friend and we would go together. But this night she was busy and I was hungry so I just went by myself. So I pull up to Wawa and right after I got there I see a police officer pull up. I didn't think anything of it. So I went inside, ordered my food, and while I was waiting in line to pay I see the police officer walk in. He was probably in his late 20s, early 30s, really tall and muscular and had blonde hair and blue eyes. Just an overall attractive guy. Right when he walked in we made eye contact at the time i was 17 so i wasn't thinking like "Ooh, arrest me officer <laughs> i'm just kidding but whatever i pay for my food go to my car then the cop comes out a few minutes after me and he looks at me while i'm getting in my car and i was really hungry and not trying to wait to eat so i watched youtube on my phone and ate my food in my car so i finished eating and start heading home mind you there was nothing wrong with my car i didn't have tints all my lights were working and all of a sudden i see cop lights behind my car so i pull over and it's lo and behold the cop from wawa like for part two just tell my family about the latest news during a monthly family video chat last Friday. Once everyone had done the preliminary catching up, my husband and I said we had some news and then I said I was pregnant. My parents, sisters, and grandmother lost it, screaming and laughing and crying in joy. This is the first grandchild, great-grandchild, niece, or nephew, so they understandably had pretty dramatic reactions. Once things calmed down a bit, I asked Kay if she was still there and she said yes, but she had to go and deal with something else. I thought it was odd, but didn't give it much further thought. Later, I get a text from Kay saying that she was going to make a pregnancy announcement then too, but that I had ruined it. I should have asked her specifically before making the announcement because she, as the firstborn, should have been the one to have the first grandchild and that my child would get all the intention and love and hers would get second rate. I sent her a text saying that I had no clue she was pregnant and congratulating her and that I was so sorry she didn't get to make the announcement when she wanted to. I then, possibly quite stupidly, asked her when her due date was and Kay said, don't worry, you're first, and has not answered anything since. So, am I the asshole? So I used to know this girl who would constantly say things like, guys, sorry, I'm so ugly. I just ruined the whole group photo, I'm sorry. And then everyone would automatically comfort her and be like, no, you're beautiful, you shine. And then she would be like, no, but thank you. And she would do the same thing over and over again, trying to get everyone's attention. So eventually I got tired. So the next time she came to me saying, I'm so ugly. I was like, <laughs> you know what? You are. She was like, what'd you say? And I was like, bitch, if you think you're ugly, I can crop you out of the photo. The fuck do you I just found out that my daughter is engaged in getting married to a man who is 20 years older than her. She's 19 and he's almost 40. Apparently, she's been seeing this man for the last six months and recently announced their engagement. I am in disbelief. What makes it worse is that she had confided in my sister, her aunt, about this when she first started seeing this guy. My sister encouraged her to do what makes her happy and basically pushed her into this relationship. Now she swears up and down that he's the love of her life and they're meant to be. She just told me about their relationship two weeks ago because she said she knew her father and I wouldn't be okay with it and was afraid of my reaction. She wanted me to meet her future husband before she introduced him to the rest of the family 
family, so she invited me to brunch with them. When I arrived, I could instantly tell that this man knew what he was doing. I can't fathom what a 19-year-old and a 40-year-old have in common. I know this man is well off from the way he spoke about work. I could feel my teeth grit every time he put his hand on my daughter's lap and it made me extremely uncomfortable to see them affectionate towards each other. Throughout the entire brunch, I was biting my tongue. However, when he mentioned that he wanted to purchase a house in another state for them to start a family soon after the wedding, I lost it. Things got extremely heated from here. 